Hi, this is Conversations with Charles Purcell. Today talking with Patty Potter Fitchett. She's a funeral director and a columnist and an old friend of mine from uh, theater days. We did theater together many years ago and with the help of social media, able to stay in touch over the years. And I thought I'd invite her in to talk about her new profession, you know, funerals, and planning, and whether you're going to be cremated or, or buried, where you're going to be scattered, the role of gallows humor, all of that. So I, I hope you enjoy the conversation with Patty Potter Fidget. Did you do any theater after we met? Did you stay oh, in theater? Oh, tons, yes. Okay, yeah, so you yeah. stayed in theater. And that's and that's even the roundabout way I came to my present uh, incarnation as a human being in, in job opportunities as a funeral director. So it all came about through theater, yeah. You know, you can, almost, <laughs> you can ask almost anybody who's in a profession how they came to be in their profession. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so many of them will have these circuitous roots. Right, right. So you came yeah. to the funeral profession. Right, let's, right. Let's get our terms straight here. Okay. What's your title? I'm a funeral director. I'm a licensed funeral director. Okay. That means I can do anything that a funeral director can do. All right. And you came to be a funeral director somehow through theater. Right. I got, okay. Well, I got to know how that happened. Well, I got uh, I got my original bachelor's degree, you know, that the throwaway one you get after uh, high school. Right. That was in theater yeah. arts. And then uh, <laughs> I went away. on. <laughs> I went on and uh, married, had kids. I was a stay-at-home mom for many years, you know, and I kept doing community theater and stuff after my kids were old enough, you know, I always stayed in it. And then when I started to get back into the job market, a friend of mine who was a funeral director, he said, oh, you've got such a great personality. I bet you could sell pre-need burial insurance. And I was like, okay. You know, so I took all these insurance classes and got this license and stuff. Well, I just sucked at it i just i have no closing okay you know um you know people would come in and you know i would meet with them and i would say oh they, I, they just weren't interested my boss would say their checkbook was in their titty pocket to be a good you know? salesperson you have to have that great personality right, but right, you but, also have to be a killer right right exactly and, you and didn't i have just that. i just didn't have that but at okay. the same token um, I had, when my kids were little, I had gotten involved in a Unitarian church in the town where I live and had, you know, done some worship services there and readings and stuff, you know, because again, the theater background comes in uh, really handy. And so one day at the funeral home, there was a family, um, you know, oh, they want a funeral service for dad, but dad doesn't believe in God. And they were all like running around agog, like, oh my God, what are we going to do? And I said, well, I could do something for that, you All know, right. and I okay. put a little something, something together. And um, and, and, uh, and doing and, that, being kind of a, a party planner, if you will, yeah, that didn't yeah. require any license. You were just helping these right. people out. Exactly. So I ended up doing that at that particular funeral home for the next 10 years. They used me as their, you know, solo officiant, you know, when people didn't have a, a clergy person. And I really enjoyed it. I probably done... Uh, several hundred funerals. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. In no particular order here, I'll ask this just because you brought it up. The the, the deceased didn't believe in God. Right. And and this is something I've always kind of wondered about. The How important is that to keep the deceased wishes in mind? And I guess the real the real question is, who's the funeral for? Is it for the mourners or is it for the dead guy? Well, there's two ways about that as a funeral director now is what as a funeral director, who is my client? And that's the family. Mm-hmm. But it's not usually as much of a tug of war as as you would think. Oh, it's not. You oh. know, I mean, if the family like has a clergy person and they go to church all the time, then I don't meet with them to plan a service then it's churchy and they've got a pastor or a priest or Mm -hmm. a rabbi and that person does it within their faith traditions and that's how they do it it's where you know well dad didn't believe in god so a lot of times the first question i ask people when i sit down to meet with them about a service is 
Well, how religious do you want it? Zero is no mention of God at all. Ten is everything straight out of the Bible. Mm -hmm. What do you want? And so, you know, we get, they look around the table. Uh, uh, two? Two? Oh, okay. Three? It's like know? a doctor so, asking you yeah, to, quali yeah. to quantify your pain. Quantify your pain. One through yeah. ten. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, and and again, I'm, I'm not... Um, you know, if I if I know a person has a Catholic background, even if they're not a practicing Catholic, I may use uh, traditional Catholic prayers, like just at the end. You know, it just gives that, you know, like the Hail Mary and the Our Father and, you know, the eternal rest grant and him a Lord part, you yeah. know. And I, I asked a priest one time um, if it's all right that I use... Catholic prayers. I'm obviously not any kind of ordained Catholic clergy person. And he said, "Oh, honey, as long as you don't transubstantiate anything, you can say it. You can say anything you want." So I promised him that I wouldn't overstep all, your bounds. Yes, all the bread would re remain bread around me. Okay. So, so the um, I, I guess the answer to the question is. I guess it's mostly for, like you said, your client is the family. Right, right. You know, that bothers me a little bit, though, because that, that puts money in the driver's seat. Well, but... Or does it? But again, if if the deceased didn't believe in God... And then I, they have a big churchy funeral. But then, it, you know, again, there's so many layers of, you know, it's that zero to ten thing. They want some kind of familiarity. They want some kind of... Yeah. Um, he's above you, looking down on you now. The continuity. <laughs> see, I, I mean, they. I, see, I think about and and everybody does this. It's only right, natural. It's human right. nature. I think about my own funeral. Right, right. And I am very much an atheist slash agnostic uh, right. Spinozan. Okay, right. right. If you know Spinoza, right. look up Spinoza's idea on the afterlife, and I won't, I won't go through the whole Spinoza thing. Spinoza and funeral I'll give you, planning. I'll give you a little. I'll give you, I'll give you a little homework assignment. <laughs> Uh, I'm a Spinozan when it comes to the afterlife. And I've got a very churchy family. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Some of them are very hardcore Catholic. A couple others are, are kind of evangelical. Right. And they're going to get up at my funeral and say a bunch of churchy, gaudy things. And I don't know where I'm going to be. If I'm, I'm, if I'm in a position where I can hear this, mm -hmm, I, mm -hmm. I don't know how I'm going to feel about that. I'll probably be a little pissed off. Yeah. Like, you're not honoring me. Right, right. And again, that happens less than, than you'd think Okay, so also. I should stop worrying because, about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, that's the bottom line. You know, and sometimes it's, um, sometimes you're honored by more than one community when you die. Yeah. You know, again, I'm, I'm a Unitarian Universalist, and I'm not necessarily a theist either. So if I were going to pray at somebody's funeral and I knew that their family would be comforted by prayer, I might say something sure. like, yeah. um, creator, um, please cradle the distress of this good family. Right. I'll, you know, I'll stop worrying about the, this Yeah, too much. in the name of do, what we live and move and have our being. Do you have a you lot know? of, uh, are there occasions, many occasions, when the deceased has done a lot of their own planning? They kind of call the shots on how the funeral's going to go? As far as the specifics, you know, whether you're going to be buried or cremated, what casket you're going to use, um, sometimes people will leave like a list of hymns okay. that they want. And yeah. That cracks me up, too. Grandpa <laughs> wasn't religious at all. What hymns did he want? Oh, Amazing Grace, Old Rugged right, Cross, right, you know. Right. Old Rugged Cross, really? <laughs> you know? That is a good Alrighty, song. That's know. a damn good yeah, song. I mean, There's a John you know, Prine version yeah. of that song that I really <laughs> yeah, like. Yeah, you know. Because... Again, you and I met a million years ago doing theater, yeah. And and I did a lot of theater after you and I parted ways, and, yeah. I, and I, I was a director. And so basically, I want to direct my funeral, right? I, exactly, I wanna, and exactly. This is terrible, but I do. I want to write the whole thing out. Well, I want to just plan everything. Exactly, and that's and again, that's exactly why. You know, not to toot my own horn, but that's exactly why I'm so good at right. what I do where families okay. are like, oh, my God. You know, I have people come up to me all the time. That's the best funeral I ever went to. <laughs> okay. I mean, and they're weeping. Yeah. And, oh, that was, that was so much like him. I've sung at many funerals. That's my. Yeah. Well, live and music. And I love singing at funerals. Effective. Yeah. I love, I, you know, I'm licensed to perform weddings, but can't stand them. Much prefer funerals. What you know? What me too. I love funerals. Is are we weird? What is that? It's just such a. 
What's going on there? Why do we love funerals? You know, because because at funerals, what really matters is the focus of the event. And so by your words or your music, you're adding to what matters. Yeah. Whereas a lot of times at a wedding, you know, as the officiant, I'm just the prop. I'm there, you know. You, Okay. You have very little to do with the meaning of the day and the showmanship is so much, you know. I don't know. I think a lot of that gets lost. The, the other thing about a funeral, we're, we're doing a show coming up on, on my other podcast, mm-hmm. Stream of Consciousness Talk Radio Theater, which you and I have spoken about, mm-hmm. uh, on the topic of happiness. Ah. And I've been, I've been researching the topic. And one of the, one of the things about happiness is that wonder is the the idea of uh, poignancy mm. to be poignant in other words happiness isn't just fun that's such a shallow way to it's, think of it's happiness it's not just joy you can have that simultaneous sadness and happiness that is such a depth of feeling mm-hmm. so that's why they can be so happy oh i mean you yeah. you hear the best stories about people because it is for the people left behind it's interesting to see the things that they give meaning to people at every funeral mom mom was the best cook in the world she was the best cook in the world and those words are such a shallow way to say mom made it feel like home mom Mm -hmm. it nourished us and enriched us Mom taught us community. Um, Mom taught us life skills. Mom taught us to put our dishes in the sink. Is <laughs> all of that is yeah. encapsulated in my mom was the best cook in the world. You know, so there is such a such a poignancy. That's that's a very a very good way to to put it. And 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 poignancy is so different than than sadness or grief. It is that. Yeah, that smile in the middle. Sometimes people will come in and they're making funeral arrangements with me, mm-hmm. and we'll just be laughing sure. our asses off. And they always stop and say, "Is are we really weird? Is this really bad? Yeah. Yeah. Is this bad? Yeah. Should we be laughing?" You know, and they're looking around. It's like this is your experience. <laughs> you know, whatever, whatever you feel. And sometimes I think the um, again, I don't want to bash religion, but. So much, so many of the rituals around death and funerals have become so rote and meaningless. Mm-hmm. I went to uh, the funeral of a, a friend's brother who died very suddenly, and the priest never mentioned his name, never mentioned him by name. Wow. Through the whole, I yeah. mean, you know, this is a devout Catholic family, and I guess, but. We expect more from that now. We want to hear. Sure. We want to hear their favorite song. We want to hear the story about, you know, when they were up deer hunting. We want to hear the story about yeah. when Dad met Mom. You know, right after World War II. Sure. You know, that's you know, that's what you want. It's funny when, when I go to a funeral, as a as a theater director, mm-hmm. I'm always I'm constantly critiquing the event. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, less mm-hmm. less dead time between speakers, please. Right, Could you have right, this better plan? Right. Did you not know you were next, Melinda? And, 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 you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and Uncle Gene gets up there, and he just goes on way too long. Oh, he's yeah, like, don't you yeah, have any yeah. sense of, of how this should go? It's like, please let me direct this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, my yeah, God. That could yeah. be just horrible. <laughs> so you help people with yeah, that. Yeah, sometimes it does train wreck yeah. a little bit. But, you, know, you know, on the funny thing, uh, laughing, I got to tell you this. My dad died when I was 19 years old. That's a pretty tough time for your dad to die. And it was pretty devastating. Yeah. Something happened to me the night before the funeral at the the viewing, I guess they call it. Yeah, yeah. Where I just found everything hilarious. (laughs) I was in, I guess, a state of shock or whatever was happening, but I felt like I was seeing the world... Like I'd put on special glasses. Right, right, right. And and I was seeing things that I didn't normally see. Like it was some kind of drug induced whatever was going on. Yeah, yeah. I just found genuine humor in almost everything, in how Aunt Joy did her makeup, <laughs> or how somebody mm-hmm. was you know eating a cookie funny or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. I just found everything hilarious, and I, oh my God, the guilt I felt. 
people often who have lost somebody recently talk about that they can't believe that the rest of the world is still kind of going on, uh-huh. you know, and that for them, everything is 180 degree different. Every every aspect of their life is um, being changed in ways they can't even imagine. Mm. And, and sometimes the enormity of that, you know, it's kind of like, it's almost like a his, hysteria in in processing you know hysteria and processing yeah yeah yeah. because in the years since i've i've tried i've gone back many times in my mind to try to explain that to myself try to understand it Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i have like everybody else i got a thousand facebook friends and my two funniest facebook (laughs) friends are you and a friend of mine named bill out in california and he is a funeral director (laughs) no Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> Unhealthy coping mechanisms. <laughs> yep. Yep. What, is there an explanation for this, or should should we just leave that? You gotta be. You gotta be a people person. Imagine, you, you know, you're going into the funeral home, and it's you and all your sisters and all your brothers, and you haven't agreed on anything except, you know, there were lumps in the gravy in 1978, <laughs> and now I gotta, you know, sit down with all of you. And help you figure out what all of you want, what's going to make all of you happy. Um, And then I got to figure out who's going to pay for it. You know, so I mean, so then money comes into it, which, oh, families just love to talk about money. So, you know, that that entryway into, you know, if you can make people feel at ease, um, you know, if you can make a little joke. um, With with your clients, with the families. Oh, definitely. But when they're not around, I imagine there's some gallows humor, right? Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> you, you see stuff i have a little uh facebook page that's just funeral director friends that i went to matc with and yeah so that would that's, that would horrify the rest right, of us right? right oh yes i mean it, ethics violations if you said this and you know this kind of things and there's no getting around it i guess you just that just is part of the it just goes right. with the territory right, right? it's just yep. the nature of what you do right right have you had anybody close to you mom dad family I, you know when they say life is circular um my mom found out she was pregnant with me about three weeks after my father died suddenly wow Uh, so i never knew my dad so there was always that sort of that specter of death you know i i think back to i was obviously born into a family that was mourning I can only imagine, the, you know, the, the household I was born in 1960. My mom's a stay-at-home mom. Yeah. And suddenly she's got a 10-year-old and a newborn. But that loss sudden somehow, though, was... I never felt like it was my loss. Mm-hmm. Because it was, again, something non-quantitative. Yeah. You know, it was something that I that I never knew. So... I've had, you know, certainly aunts and uncles, grandparents, but um, so I've just got my mom, and I've still got her. Okay, so you really haven't right. experienced this yet. Not now, no, no. Wow, no. You know, I often think that my my personality came from. Um, like if I was funny, if I could break through that, that depression, that funk, I'm guessing that that would be the times when I got reactions okay. as a baby and as a mm-hmm. child, you know, a toddler and a, and right. a child. Because as you said, you were born into this house of mourning. Right, right. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's... My mother has shared with me that... Um, when she went to the doctor, you know, she's feeling poorly after her husband's funeral. And uh, she went to the doctor and he said, well, you're pregnant. And she said, yeah, I don't want to be. You do what you need to do. Oh, really? And um, he gave her like a series of injections. You need to come back once a week for these injections. Now, I don't know what they were, but I think what they gave her was time, you know, and then... I mean, it was 1960 again. So, you know, and then they were like, nope. Wait a minute. What kind, of, what kind of injections? I have no idea. I have no idea. B12. Some. I'm, it, they weren't like to 
to help her abort a baby. Oh, I thought I, think, I thought that's what you meant. Like I think to induce... that I think that's what she thought they meant at the time because and, she was like, "Well, this is very interesting because yeah. is that what they meant her to think?" In other words, I think so. Wow. I think so. I think they were just so they were just to giving buy her some time. So we they led care. her. Just so this is clear, they led her to believe, to believe. that they were inducing. Uh, like yes, a miscarriage. Like a miscarriage. Yes. Yes. But they really weren't. They were just duping her to give her time. At least that's your right. theory. Right. Right. Or you were stronger than the, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the injections. Yeah, yeah. Go get them. <laughs> Good for you. You beat them. That's a wow, that's quite a story. Yeah. Yep. So you do you do all the physical stuff as well? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. In, yeah. In, you got to be licensed for all of in, that. In your industry, are there people who specialize? Like I'm only out front with the family, or I'm I'm only in the lab, or whatever you call it, with doing the physical stuff. Are there people who specialize, or do most people? Well, everybody do has everything? to be licensed to do everything, but there are certainly people. Um, everybody's got their their specialty. I'm definitely better with families than okay. I am in the prep room. But you do work in the prep room. Right, right. And the the place where I work, we probably do over 75% cremation. So yeah. we don't do as much embalming and body preparation as some other funeral homes yeah. do. But yeah, no, I you do all of that. But the, but my my strength is yeah. you know, but, but but I go on calls. I'm on call every other night, every other weekend. Somebody calls in the middle of the night. I hop in the van and up. go get them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The, is that ever going to go away completely? The whole you know embalming and open casket, the full body burial. That just has to go away, right? Doesn't it? Well, is that ever going to be a thing the, of the past? It is. Oh, it is. And in the in the funeral industry, um, the people who aren't adapting are really feeling it. Now, we're built around the supposition that 75% of our business is going to be cremation. So then we can do a full funeral. We can do the full thing. But, you know, we do less and less of it every year. Some people don't want to be buried. It, there's, there's a lot of expense. I mean, if it, a casket and a vault... And um, cemetery property, yeah. plus then after you buy the property, then you have to pay opening and closing costs. That means what you pay to dig the hole and cover it back up. Oh, it's not opening. I thought you meant like buying a house. They're no, opening no, and closing. no. Literally like digging opening and filling. the hole. Right, okay. right. So, I mean, and, and so casket, vault, um, headstone, plot. Yeah. Uh, it's the, all plus a little the bit... opening and closing. That's you're looking at about ten grand. It's all right a little there. bit crazy, isn't it? And, and I mean, you, you haven't even gotten it. a prayer card or a thank you note. I mean, that's yeah. none of that. An obituary. So, yeah. And it's plus, it's crazy uh, environmentally, it's just heinous. Environmentally, right. right, right. Yeah, in a sealed tin box. And the embalming inside. fluids and mm -hmm. it really, it just mm -hmm. has to go away. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy to hear you say that you think it is going away. The one way that we've really capitalized on that is that we've done a lot more of what we call a traditional cremation and the the thing about the open casket viewing is that people want to see aunt lois again they want they that's how they grew up with it I that's know. a you know i mean again mistake, i belong though. to a unitarian church and i don't think we've ever had a body in the church you know? right or, or we right. did once and the minister was like what do, I, what do i say at the cemetery i've never been to the cemetery <laughs> you know? yeah but um but that's not that's not her though that's not her that you can see i'm, right. I'm not i but told you already she she's in her best dress I, I, she's got nail polish and lipstick i already on. told you i'm not a religious person <laughs> but i'm telling you that's right, not right. aunt it's betty so you can just her. tell just by looking at yeah, her yeah. any funeral i've ever any open cast of funeral i've ever been yeah. to that is not the person who i knew at all mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's just like the suitcase they were right. carrying around i mean that's <laughs> right and, and why again, would you, and not, why would you put their suitcase on display? i'm not religious but yeah. i'm telling you they're not there yeah in yeah. any respect and it's yep. just kind of kind of gross you know it and is, you, and you make them odd. and you guys do you know you guys you funeral directors you do your best right you know with right. the makeup and all of that you do the best you can mm -hmm. but 
You know, it's very funny because <laughs> part of the um, part of the training that you get is in cosmetizing. And so, you know, it's all from back in the day when everybody had an open casket yeah. funeral. So, you know, we had to learn to, like, make an ear out of wax in case somebody's missing an ear. And while I'm thinking, <laughs> well, if they're missing an ear, it's going to be closed casket. Lay, I'm sorry. Lay them on their side. <laughs> yeah. Them, you know, put a hat on them. I'm not making an ear, you know. <laughs> so, oh, you know, so a lot of it is that old, you know, but then what we do is we have the open casket viewing and then the person's cremated afterwards. afterwards. So you, so you have, save you all of that. Do you know? um. Do the deceased in an open casket, uh, do they wear shoes and socks? If people bring them in, we put them on them. Really? You yeah. do? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes they don't fit. Underwear? You know? Do they wear underwear? We Anything that you bring in, we will put it on them. And usually if the people <laughs> don't bring underwear, we try to, you know, we got like extra underwear, you know. <laughs> so I remember one time um, a friend of mine, his mom passed away and she was like, the original Italian mama, you know, she uh -huh. was just gorgeous, always, you know, had her hair all, um, you know, bouffanted, oh, right, right. pitch black to, to her dying day. Yeah. You know, you'd see the tiniest little roots and then it was pitch black again. And she wore this bright pink lipstick. And I remember it was the morning of her funeral. So she had died several days earlier. She was obviously already in the casket. You know, the services were about to start. And her husband comes in and says, I forgot her girdle. <laughs> and I thought, well, thank God. Who wants to spend eternity in a girdle, you know? <laughs> so that one time it worked out okay. You know, she got to go in cotton panties and, you know, <laughs> no Playtex 18-hour business. So <laughs> It would be comfortable for your last ride mm -hmm, there, for mm -hmm, your long journey. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, but people are getting even more... Um, you know, more and more people, even if they have a showing like that, it's they put them in their favorite sweater or their Packers gear or, you know, yeah. it's not the, you know, everybody's in a suit and tie okay. or anything. Right. Much more casual, much more casual. A lot more people like, and that's another thing is like people come and they put stuff in the in the casket All and right. then those things are either buried or, or cremated with the person. You know, again, it's... It might not be the ritual that you're, that you would want. Yeah. But a lot of people do find a lot of comfort in that. Yeah, that sounds kind of sweet. You know, and that last that last moment right before mass starts, where you know we're going to invite you forward to take your last leave by the casket. Yeah. And there's that that ritual, final seeing of the person, um, and it's not. Because I'm there when they had their last final seeing of the person. And a lot of times their eyes were open, their mouth was open. They'd been on a bed in the living room sick for mm, right. months and months. They had, you oh, know, I never thought of that. crappy yeah. jammies on and stuff. So some of these people at the funeral, they saw the the difficult Right. They saw the, yeah, right. that, I, I right. hadn't thought of that. And so maybe that person's lost a little weight and we can, you know, just puff out the cheeks a little bit because we get yeah. a picture. Oh, that's how, uh, there was a woman one okay. time, she um, lived out on a farm with two sons. And I mean, they take, they took really good care of her, but they didn't like take her for haircuts and stuff. So, you know, when she died, she was in a nightgown and her hair was just like wild woman all over the place and stuff. Well, they brought in this picture and they said, oh, we don't we don't think we can see her. We don't think she, we can have an open casket. And they brought in this picture. Well, their mom used to wear her hair in this cute little page boy, you know, with mm -hmm. the right at the chin line with the, the bangs and everything. Yeah. And we brought in a hairdresser and oh. she did her hair like that. And they were like, oh, cool. Ma, okay. Ma, you know, and so all of a sudden it was, oh, that's who she was. All right. You know, she had her little sweater on. And so there is. I'm, I'm definitely hearing this. I'm yeah, thinking back. Yeah. I, was, I was being a little mean earlier. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm hearing this. That makes sense. Physically, though, I mean, yeah. the things that you have to do to preserve and yeah. restore and sanitize a body are not appetizing things. No, I wouldn't think so. So, yeah. So you said most of your most of your work is is cremation in the in the final, and uh, right. there are there any is there anything new? I, I've 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 seen these ads for uh, trees, 
Or you get buried in a tree or something like that. What is that about? You know, all of that stuff. You I kind of like the idea of that. A, the pot or the tree or something. I guess I just don't know what is their product for. You know, you got the cremated remains and you get a tree well, and, you, hear, and you dig a hole. I'll tell you why you know, I like it. I don't it. know what the product does. I'll tell you why I like it. Because uh, I like the fact that I can go to where my mom and dad are buried. And I can go to a particular spot. Yes, yes. And I like that. And so if anybody cares enough about me that they want to go to a place that really is very specific, mm-hmm. um, that's why that whole idea of, of the tree, however that works, you put your ashes in the, right, in the bulb right. of the tree, uh, and then it's there. Right, and, right. And that's a very specific thing as opposed to just, well, scatter in the Pacific Ocean. Right, right. So uh, that that's appealing to me. Well, now then you're going to want to look into what's called natural burial. Did you ever see, uh, are you a fan of six feet under at all? Yeah. yeah. Remember at the end, they wrapped Nate in a shroud. Spoiler alert, Nate died. They wrapped Nate in a shroud and they carried him into a meadow and they placed his unembalmed remains in the earth and they they. Yeah, but that's up. illegal, isn't no, it? No, there's places right here in Milwaukee you can do that. Oh, okay, you can do that like legally. at a cemetery. You can do it legally at a at a cemetery. At okay. a, all right. But it's but it's natural burial, and so there wouldn't be you know a, a headstone with your name on it. Okay. But your family would have the coordinates. You know, he's at the the big rock next to the lilac bush. And you could pe- and uh, see, I like the idea of planting a tree right on top of it. Right. Yeah. 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 So yeah. there there is something there. And I, I, I hear you when you say, I like having a place to visit. Yeah. And so that's the one thing that's valuable about a cemetery. Mm-hmm. But does it need to be a cemetery? Does it, you know, could it right. be a natural spot? Could it be, I don't know. I, I do like that that something marks the place. And, I do you too. know, we get, we get a lot of people who say, oh, I'm going to, I'm taking the ashes home with me. I'm taking the ashes home with me. And it's like, okay, but. Recently, we had a, a a couple who moved into a house in town, and like down in the basement, oh. they found some cremated remains. I mean, wow. in so somebody a, moved and left, right? Left but like, but Uncle like Joe. two or three moves before. So okay. I mean, they couldn't. They Googled and tried, you know. So they didn't know what to do. They brought it to us, and so we won't dispose of it. But do, do ashes so, retain any DNA? Can you test ashes? No, absolutely they, not. They they retain no, nothing. No, they're absolutely retain nothing. No. Okay. The other new thing that's coming around is called and I don't believe there's any in the United States yet, but I think they have them in, in Europe, in Scandinavia, is called resomation. And it's kind of like um, it's kind of like the cremation process, but it uses like high powered water to dissolve and I, I it's like wow. water huh. and some kind of chemicals. Yeah, I'm assuming. And then and then it's kind of freeze dried like Folgers coffee crystals. Oh, I think I read it. And then, yeah, I've heard of this. You know, and then what yeah. you end up with looks almost exactly like cremated remains, but okay. you haven't. There hasn't been any burning. All right. You know, so so no carbon emissions. But I don't think it's like just water. I'm sure there's some kind yeah. of nasty chemical that's involved with that too. But again, I, yeah, it's like this, a big, huge chamber. This rings a bell. I remember yeah. reading about it, and I, think, I believe and it's the called article, resomation. R e s o. I think the article I read said it was more environmentally mm-hmm. responsible. Right. All right. Have you thought about your own funeral? Oh God. Um, you want to be scattered anywhere? You know what? I, no, I don't really. Wow, I really? don't really know. I mean, when I think about it, I know it would be at my church. I assume it's going to be goofy. You yeah. Know? <laughs> I mean, it'll be real spiritual and it'll be real silly. So you have a time. church and you have. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's. You've, you've, and you've, you've got that community right, already kind of right. built in. Yeah. Yeah. So you haven't thought about where you want to be scattered or told anybody? <sighs> I don't know that I love I would, that you haven't thought about this. It's yeah, amazing and to I me. And I don't know that I that I would need a <laughs> marker. You know, so many people ask us, "Oh, can you can you spread cremated remains here? Can you spread them there? Can you spread them there?" And basically, it's littering. 
you know, there's nothing harmful in them. So yeah. I, I always tell people. There are laws about it. Right, but, right. But, it, but it's not you, a serious. You have to do it so obviously yeah. to get. Um, and I always tell people, you know, if you got to do it at Graceland or Lambeau Field or something, you're going to have to Shawshank Redemption it. You know, put a little in your oh. pocket, <laughs> you know, <laughs> go out to the yard. And, yeah. you know, so I okay. mean, I wouldn't mind if some night my son's took my cremated remains and just emptied them over the headstones of my parents. Okay. Well, you know, nice. that would be, that would be okay to me. I don't need a yeah. stone. That's, but again, I want them to have a place to go. They grew up planting flowers yeah. at, at grandpa's, at yeah. grandpa's stone. Grandma's name is already on it without the dates of death on that side of their family. And then grandpa over here who they never knew is a couple sure. of, couple of blocks over here in the cemetery and grandma will be there too so. and, and it always comes back to that for me yeah, uh, of, yeah. Of, I'll, i can let a lot of things go but i that's something i feel strongly about i want my kids to have a place mm -hmm. a, a particular spot right whether right. they ever go there or not right that's up to them but i want them to have that yeah yeah so i'll yeah. figure i'll figure that out yeah <laughs> As far as we and we started early in the conversation talking about planning the funeral, I'll I'll, I'll try not to be too controlling from the other side <laughs> as much as I want to. I don't I, I don't like um, still thinking about my own funeral. Mm -hmm. This has become cliche. I, if I had a nickel for every any time I heard people say, "Oh, I don't want you to cry and have a big funeral. have a party. I want everybody to have a." That's just so dumb. I just I I. I I don't get that. Uh, oh, well, we have a, we have a. I don't want anybody to have a party. Mm -hmm. I want you to come and you know wail and cry. Mm -hmm. Don't have a party. Don't Fire drink. Some mourners. For yeah. God's <laughs> sakes, don't drink at my funeral. <laughs> please, if okay, I'm just sitting. The, please don't drink at my funeral. I oh my God, it's not a party. <laughs> I did a um, uh, funeral for a well-known. A uh, tavern owner, and this was some years ago, and I'll I'll leave him unnamed. But um, so they had they his tavern was too small for the funeral, so they moved it to the Moose Club, you know, classy. And <laughs> so there was two rooms in the Moose Club: the room with the bar, and then the room, the big room where we were having the memorial service. And so no body or anything. This was like just an urn. And so as I got up to start the uh, funeral service, the people who were in the bar opened the door, but didn't come into the room. They just wanted to listen? <laughs> they just wanted to listen. They didn't, they didn't want to leave the bar. So, so then you, from so your... They just, so I just did it extra loud. So, I mean, there were some people in my room, but there was a lot of empty So seats. then from your spot, you could hear the glasses <laughs> right, clinkling. Right. Oh, and exactly, exactly. Some cigarette people, smoke was some wafting in. weren't and... even there for the funeral. Yeah, I thought, okay, well, he got what he, he, got what he wanted, <laughs> I guess, you know. So, yeah. And there's a, now everything is a celebration of life. A celebration of life will be held, you yeah. know. I guess I, I, I get it. Yeah. I understand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but and and it gets back to what we were talking about. There, the, the, poignancy, sad, happy. Have some depth of feeling. Don't just have a party. I think that really just misses the whole point. Yeah, yeah. To yeah. my mind. Yeah, and that's sometimes part of what you. When you sit down with the family and you're planning the service and, you know, how religious do you want it? And then I always just say, well, tell me about your dad. Yeah. You know, and so then we go through and it's not like every goofy story they tell is what I'm going to spit right back to them. You're looking for a kinesthetic response mm -hmm. and it's either laughter or, or you, it's you tears. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that means, oh, I heard that. When she talked about what a special person my dad was. Yeah, that was really, yeah. that was really true. You know? I was at a funeral. I, was, I sang at a funeral once. And the deceased, from what I could gather from this event and from what everybody said, was a real son of a bitch. Nobody could hardly think of one good thing to say about him. They all tried. They all loved him, you know, brothers, sisters, parents. Uh, he, he was not an old guy. He was a younger guy. Parents were still alive. But they just went up there and went, oh, yeah, Chuck, 
boy, he had his problems. He treated us all like crap, and he drank like a fish, and he, and they just couldn't think of one damn good thing to say about him. So why would you open up the mic then? See, to me, wait, that's wait. a that's a situation where they, you have I the pastor know. come in, yeah. and you know, even I would read a couple they, of Bible they verses. Say, they would say know? that you know yeah, we loved yeah. him, and right, we're sorry right. he's gone, and he right. liked uh, Grateful Dead. And so they had me right. sing Ripple. Right, right, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. Uh, so they talked about the things he liked. Yeah, And yeah. they tried to be respectful. Right. But they really, I didn't hear one good thing about the man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Have you ever experienced that? We're just oh, a, a real yes. SOB. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, very early on, I was uh, doing a, a graveside service. And so they didn't have any service at the church. It was the full casket that's going down into the ground and the wife's there and the daughters and everything. And I'm reading from my book and I'm getting like nothing from them. Yeah, okay. Like no sadness, no, you know, stony silence. And so, you know, I'm flipping through the pages and I'm edit, edit, edit. Let's make this shorter. Okay, you know? you're editing uh, on the fly. You yeah. know, and my boss comes up to me and he goes, um, I'm like, what? Oh, God. Did I forget to tell you about this family? I said, well, apparently so. What's going on? Well, apparently on his deathbed, um, Dad had uh, confessed to molesting all three daughters. Oh. Uh, none of them had known about the others, and the mother didn't know about any of oh. it. And they did everything but spit on the casket oh, and leave. Man, I was like, "No, you didn't mention that." You know, oh, but man. maybe maybe it was best I didn't know. You know, maybe no, it was just I think best you should have known. I think it should have been okay. There you go. Thanks, pops. God, goodbye. Yeah, just, yeah. That should have been like a thirty you know, second there was, funeral. You know, there was other people there though. Okay, yeah. And wow, so, I suppose. And so you you can only bring up. Yeah. You know, it's like for suicides. Oh, I say yeah. I say to people, are we talking about it? You, it's up to them. I, right. Yeah. You know, and some people uh, don't, and other people will get up and say, you know, my mom committed suicide. If you if you're having problems, talk to somebody. Right. Um, a lot of heroin overdoses. So people people who you know you say, oh, had your had your brother been sick long? Uh, well, he was a schizophrenic and he drank himself to death. Yeah. But that right. person's family still needs, even if they're even sure. if it's just a direct cremation and they're not going to do anything, there's still some you know like the guy oh Chuck was an asshole but he was our brother yeah you know? it's yeah. kind of like they feel the need to to do something and then we have other people who are like you know you try to find next to kin yeah I don't care do what you want don't care huh don't call me don't call here again so wow. Yeah, it's it's the whole gamut, the whole gamut. Yeah, that's uh, you got to deal with some stuff. Yeah, yeah, and and in a non non judgmental way. Yeah. I got I got one last question to ask you. That's that's I'm I didn't even want to because it's so pedestrian. Uh huh. It's so cliche, but I have to ask you, what do you say to people? In other words, my friend's father dies. What do I say to my friend? What's the best thing to say? You know, I think the first thing you need to do is take off the pressure of feeling that there's some there's a thing you could say that's going to make your friend not be sad that her dad's dead. Okay, so you take know, that so away first. Take that yeah, take that away first. Okay. You know, start with, "Oh, honey, I'm so sorry." Start with, "This must be so hard. This must be so difficult." Mhm. So, and that can cover a lot of, it can cover if Kelly was real close to her family and her dad, or if Kelly's has been estranged from her dad. So you don't need to know the relationship between her and her dad to say, oh, Kelly, I'm so sorry. This must be so tough for you. So I guess maybe better advice is what not to say. Oh, and that's all the God needed another angel bullshit. Um... All of the oh, it's it's part of a plan. Yeah, you know that's where the religious. He's stuff's, in a better place. Oh God, that's where the religious stuff sometimes can just slap people silly, and I just yeah, I get so angry because it's so unhelpful. Well, he's with the Lord now, and 
okay, you know, I mean, I get even, I even get the concept the, of heaven and that that's comforting, but sometimes even if the mourner is a religious person, that's still they still don't right, want to hear that. Right, right. Unless you're their that's pastor, important to know. you know. Yeah, yeah. That's a really important to know. Yeah. Just because you you know full well you're talking to someone you know well, a close friend, you know this mm-hmm. person is religious. Mm-hmm. He's in a better place, or God has another angel. They don't want to hear that. Not helpful. Yeah, not helpful. That's good to know. Yeah, yeah. And and this, I'm 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 about ninety percent sure I'm going to edit this out. Okay. I swear to God, this is a confession. I think sometimes people get really maudlin beyond reason it's like like i told you i've had my mother died my father died i had a close friend who died um people die Mm -hmm. oh my god are you serious get over it Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i understand grief i've been through it it. yeah a lot of it is very attention seeking behavior oh i guess you know all of that because you're the saddest one it, your loss is the biggest and you're they were the, the most it was she was the most wonderful mother we that were, god ever put on this planet friend. we were best friends you didn't see her like i did yeah yeah oh you you get you get a lot of that people who need to have their their needs met at the funeral. Oh my goodness! It's, it can be it can be very uncomfortable. Because, because it can be we just, very uncomfortable. We just passed Mother's Day. Yeah, and yeah. and and it it just brings to mind because I see this on a smaller level, every Mother's Day, every Father's Day, every kid's birthday, where people just go overboard. The most wonderful, the most mm-hmm. beautiful, the most. Come on, we've all got a mother. I love my mother. Mm-hmm. You know, you know what I'm saying, yeah. right? I I, yeah. I have a I get. I guess everybody needs to have their own way of expressing themselves. We had we had a woman one time. Well, this woman was the sister-in-law, and apparently she's a pastor at her church. So there was 11 <laughs> people at the service in a room about twice the size of this tiny little booth that we're recording in. Uh-huh. <laughs> and um, she brought a sound system. <laughs> <laughs> So for her praise songs. Okay. You know? All right. So, and she was having trouble setting up the sound system. And somebody finally said, Sharon, we're all right here. We can hear you, you know. But she just she just went on and on. And I mean, this is her brother in law. Yeah. Um But yeah, sometimes the, you know, the the drama queens or or everybody one thing that just kind of gets on me is everybody wants something. Can, who gets the cross in the casket? Or can I get a rose from the casket? I didn't get a rose. All I got was a carnation. Oh, dear God. <laughs> I don't care. It couldn't matter less, you know? Yeah. Oh, well, I'm one of the granddaughters. Oh, oh, all right. Let me go knock down that old woman I just gave a rose <laughs> to and tell her she's not closely enough related. And, you know. And, so. and even though in, in many respects, this is one of the biggest, most profound things that will happen to you in your life. Right. I mean, it really right. is. Let's, yeah. give, it, let's yeah. give it its due. Yeah. Uh, and yet... People can still just be have a, come in with all the foibles that we have in other parts of our lives, and we just can be assholes and jerks. And it's not like they all go away just because we're mourners, right? Right. We're still we're still us with all of our faults. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? It helps. The closer to the death that the funeral is, the better everybody gets along. If you if you let it oh, go. Yeah, yeah. Let it go too far sometime, like uh, a couple of weeks or something. Yeah, that makes then, sense. Then people, you know, then people have started to pick through their stuff and I everything. Can see that. And, you know, yeah. you need it to be, while, you know, a couple of days while everybody's still sad. And, yeah. you know, it just makes, makes, again, then your focus is correct. If yeah. it's three weeks later, you don't have that hyper focus because you can't, it's not sustainable. That that hyper sure. grief, that hyper focus. You wouldn't focus. want it to be. You wouldn't want it to be. You could, you know, they say agony and ecstasy. Either one of them lasting forever would be super unpleasant. <laughs> right. So, you know. right. Well, this was great. Uh, this we're done. Except to okay. ask you, for the record, for the listeners, give us your information. Um, I know you have a column. 
Uh, and is that still happening, right? Yes, it's yes. A, it's a, uh, and I, how often do you do it, and where can people find it? It's once a month at the Kenosha News, so kenoshanews.com. And I work for Casey Family Options Funerals and Cremations in Kenosha. And so you can always reach me on their website or Facebook page. My next my next idea is trying to find how to how to bring you know this artistic sensibility, you know, writing and speaking and performing, how to bring that gift into more of a tool that I can use as a funeral director. So this was kind of the my first step out to say, well, what what could I do that would bring more people into the conversation about what things are like now. So I okay. really appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. And, and yeah. we didn't really talk about it. We probably should have. But, but yeah, you have all this theater background. Right. And you've been on stage. So your theater theater experience, it um, would really it serves you well. I'm a big fan of, oh, of what definitely. theater can teach everybody. Yes, absolutely. You know, eye contact, control of a crowd being able to present yourself well, um, being able to, you know, when you're on stage with somebody else, how you give them the focus, you give them the attention. Mm -hmm. And and then the audience knows where to give their focus and their attention. Public speaking, timing, humor. Um, and it's not like we never have to face these issues. Most of us right. have to face it several times in our right. work any kind of a public meeting or right. or in church or there's there so many right. different occasions right right yeah where these skills really come into play yeah yeah you know the, like i like i started out with sort of the throwaway degree but it really <laughs> you know it's been the it's been the foundation for for everything sure. that i've done since then yeah so yeah and i and, and actually it's funny because i've had this conversation with with uh, other people too I'll, I'll scold you a little bit for using. Don't use that joke anymore. Throw away degree. Oh yeah. <laughs> because we we all do that. Mm -hmm. We'll say with air quotes. Oh, I'm an artist. Mm -hmm. Or I studied philosophy, and we and we do these self deprecating jokes. Right. Right. But oh, the value. Mm -hmm. I mean, my throw away degree, <laughs> which uh, you know I'll never use that expression, was philosophy. Right. Right. And it served me in everything else I've ever in done. In every way. In yeah. every way. And, and you know, here's an idea that it's fallen out of favor. But, gee, isn't that first four years of college just to kind of learn how to learn? So, and then once you know how to learn, you know, you pick a topic and you learn about it. Once you know how to learn, well, right. you know, then. It opens you up to, yeah. to ideas that you wouldn't have been exposed to otherwise. Right, right. It opens you up for ideas that you're going to come in contact with years down the road. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. You've been listening to Conversations with Charles Purcell. Today's guest, Patty Potter Fitchett, funeral director and columnist. If you'd like to listen again or recommend to friends, we're on all your favorite platforms. Best thing to do is just search Charles Purcell or even better, Charles Purcell Presents. And we'll pop right up. iTunes, iHeartRadio, wherever you want to hear us. I invite you to listen to my other podcast, Stream of Consciousness Talk Radio Theater. Again, the same search will uh, we'll get you there. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.